welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be scraping the top 10 or top list of um, restaurants from TripAdvisor. So of course, this scrape could be useful to you guys um, whenever you guys are trying to go on a holiday or just in case you guys want to scrape locations of restaurants from TripAdvisor in general. So what we want to do first off is obviously figure out the country or location from which we want the restaurants from. So if you head over to tripadvisor.com, what you could do um, is type in, in the where to section, type in obviously the um, location of where you want your restaurants. So for me, I'm going to go London and then I'm just going to click on London restaurants. Now, what we want to do here, as you can see now, it's come up with the list um, probably sorted in a particular order list of restaurants that we can visit in London and you've got different um, <clears throat> information about each of these restaurants. So you've got uh, the name of the restaurant, which is the obvious one. You've got how many stars it's got out of five. Uh, you've got the cuisine, the dollar signs represent how expensive it is. And then obviously if you go to the next page, you probably have more information, which is going to be useful to scrape, such as the uh, rank of the restaurant in London, so it's seventh. Um, the address, because once we scrape this, you guys can make use of it. Um, if you have the address, you'll obviously know where to visit. The phone number and of course, um, those details could be, are going to be the ones that we're going to be scraping. So without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to go back a page here. Slacking a little bit, and what we want to do first off is grab the URL to this page because that's the page that we're going to be scraping. So copy this URL, and we'll keep that at hand. So what we're going to do now is import all the libraries that we need. So from Selenium Wire, import web driver. I will be uh, giving you guys a list in the description of all the libraries you need to install so that you can easily do that. Now we need beautiful soup of course to do all the parsing. Then we want to import the web driver manager so that we don't have to install any Chrome driver manually. And then finally we will import pandas because it will let, let us um, nicely structure the data and save it as a CSV in the end as well. Hopefully it all runs fine, and if it does, we should be able to proceed with the next steps. Amazing. So what you want to do first is create a variable called scrape URL, and we're going to set that URL to the URL that we just copied a second ago. So the page that has all of our um, locations or restaurant locations. Next, we're going to create a empty variable called data, which is just going to be an empty array. This is going to be where we store all of our um, results that we scrape. So now comes the important part. Um, whenever we do any scraping activity, I may have obviously um, mentioned this or focused on this point before, but um, we will always want to try and use a proxy because when we do so, um, the chances of us getting rate limited or blocked um, are narrowed down. So. In this uh, video, we're going to be using um, proxies from IP Royal, who have kindly um, sponsored today's tutorial. IP Royal is a proxy service provider providing safe, private, and unrestricted access to online information. With a pool of over 2 million plus reliable IPs, IP Royal allows clients to use a proxy server as an intermediary between their devices and the web. Which, which allows clients to maintain their privacy and use resources they can't access directly due to geo restrictions, etc. IP Royal's data center proxies can serve as a great product for businesses or users looking for premium high speed anonymous private proxies, which usually have unlimited bandwidth and no extra charges. For data scraping, though, I would recommend using IP Royal's reg residential proxies as they not only allow anonymity when scraping websites, which can help avoid getting rate limited, but also let you select the geolocation of the proxy either through the dashboard or by making minor changes in your code. 
Lastly, IP Royal handles automatic IP rotation, which not only allows easy integration within your code, but they also provide the option to use static IPs in case that you decide to keep an IP for a longer duration of time. In this video, IP Royal has provided me with a discount code that will give you guys a straight 50% discount on their Royal Residential Proxies. The code is Johan50 and I've also included a link in the description which you guys can use to obtain the discount. So guys, make sure to use the discount code before the deal expires or you'll be missing on a great deal. So to begin with, what we're going to do is go to our IP Royal dashboard. Um, now I've obviously got a 1.17 gigabytes of uh, Royal Residential Proxies, which is the one I recommend. Um, once you're in the dashboard, you can select from one of many countries that are available. You can also select the region. In this case, I've just gone with United Kingdom. You can also keep it random if you like, um, which means that it will uh, keep rotating or just select a random country or region. So I've stuck with United Kingdom and London in this case. I've set my IP rotation to random, which means that um, I will be assigned random IPs uh, while the scrape is happening. And then what we need from the dashboard, once we've selected all, uh, from these four options, is this little URL right here. So you just want to copy from where it says HTTP and then end your copy um, where the port number ends. So at the end of the port number, you just click on copy. And now when we go back, we're going to need the um, <coughs> proxy information that we just saved or just copied. So let's create a new variable called proxy and we'll assign that to um, the proxy information that we just copied a second ago. So now what we want to do is create a dictionary called options. And in that dictionary, we'll have a key called proxy, and that's going to be assigned to a key, another dictionary with HTTP as the key. And the HTTP proxy will be set to obviously this, and another key called HTTPS. And the HTTPS proxy will also be set to the same proxy that we have pasted up here. So now that that's all set up, we can go ahead and initialize our Chrome driver. So we'll create a new variable called driver and then set it to web driver. Now obviously we're using Chrome, not Firefox, so we type in Chrome. And then we use Chrome driver manager um, to basically install any necessary drivers required. If, it, if you already have the necessary drivers, it's not going to overwrite them, obviously. Now the second parameter is going to be the Selenium wire options, which are the proxy options that we've just uh, saved inside the dictionary over here. So by assigning the options variable to Selenium wire options, we're basically letting um, Selenium know that we want it to use a proxy rather than just using a naked connection. So now that that's out of the way, what we, we can finally start scraping. So we're going to do driver.get, which means we want to scrape a particular page. And then we need to, as a parameter, we need to tell it which URL to scrape from. So we saved our URL in the scrape URL variable. So we'll pass that in. And then what we want to do next is create a new variable called soup. And that's obviously going to be assigned to beautiful soup. And... Uh, we're going to pass it the page source, so driver.page source. What happens here is once the driver goes ahead and scrapes all the data and stores it um, in this uh, driver object, what happens next is we create a new, new variable called soup where we assign beautiful soup to pass all of the contents of that page that was just scraped. Let's run this and hopefully a Chrome window will pop up on my screen um, and then it should start opening up the URL we are wanting to scrape from. So let's give it a few moments. My internet connection is a bit rusty, which is why it may take some time. So I'll be forwarding this bit in the actual video. Okay, now that the page has successfully scraped and we have our soup variable ready, which is the past version of that page, we can go ahead and view the soup variable. All you're going to see is a bunch of um, HTML and JavaScript code which was rendered out from the site. So 
what we want to do now is we want to go to the actual um, TripAdvisor website and from here uh, we want to find the elements that we're wanting to scrape. So first off, what we actually need to find out is um, we need to find the list of all the restaurants that we need details about. So in order to find the list of all the restaurants, which are obviously down here, we need to inspect the elements. So let's inspect. Oh, it's taking a bit of time. And when we inspect, we should be able to uh, hover over the different elements. And as I hover over the different elements, we'll be able to see um, the items that, or the divs that hold the data that we need. Now, obviously we only care about the name of the restaurant in this case um and the the url um which is uh, hidden behind the name so that we can go onto the next page and then scrape the rest of the details like the contact etc so all we care about right now is um the the bit that's containing this uh london cabaret club uh, text and the URL at the moment. So let me just find that again. Okay, so it looks like this is the div that contains what we need. So we know it's a div, and what we want to do is just copy the class name, and we can go back to our code and say create a new variable called restaurants and then assign that to soup.findall and basically we want to find all the divs and we want to only find the divs that have the class name whatever the class name was that we copied right now let's run this and we'll print restaurants down as well as you can see now let's just print the first restaurant from the list this is the entire div that contains all the data that we need and we can verify that because as we can see here it says the name of the restaurant steak and company um, Gloucester and we also have the URL to the next page now we're gonna have to loop through this array of restaurants so that we can scrape the details for each and every restaurant so I'm gonna create a loop here where I'm gonna say where for restaurant um, restaurant in restaurants. Um, then we're going to keep the name of the restaurant. So name equals restaurant dot find. Now in this whole div, we only need the eight anchor tag because that's what has our URL and the um, name of the restaurant and instead of keeping the url from the anchor tag we're going to keep the text the text basically will give us the name of the restaurant so if i do print name and break out of the loop it should say the name of the first restaurant that it sees perfect now we also need the url so i'm going to create a new variable called url and then i'm going to assign that to restaurant dot find anchor tag again now instead of keeping the text we're going to keep the href href is an attribute of the anchor tag which usually has the link uh, to redirect the user to so if i were to print url now as you can see we have the url but the one bit to notice is that it's missing the front part of the url it only has the end part so we can fix that by quickly adding on the front part of the URL. Let's go back to the website. And if we click on this right here, the missing part is the tripadvisor.com bit. So let's copy that. And if we go back and paste in here, tripadvisor.com, don't need the forward slash because it's already inclusive in here. So we print that again. This should be a working link now. Let's give that a go. Copy that. And let's paste that in here. Voila, it works. Great. So now that we have the URL to the second page, 
we can um, scrape the details on the second page. So the details we're going to be scraping, like I said before, are the star rating, uh, the rank of the restaurant, the um, the money information, how expensive it is, and some contact details. So going back to the code again, what we need to do now is ask our driver to scrape the next page. So since we only have the first page that we had scraped, which gives us only the list of restaurants. Now for each restaurant, we need to scrape the, the, the page off that restaurant so that we can get the details for that restaurant. So we'll do driver.get URL and then we'll do soup2, not the best naming conventions, but remove equals beautiful soup and then we'll pass beautiful soup the driver dot page source so this should have the updated page now which is the second page so let's run that and obviously i'll be fast forwarding this again because it's probably going to take a few seconds due to my slow internet connection right so now that that's done scraping one of the pages from the restaurant Let's take a look at soup two. Now, once again, it's just a bunch of HTML and JavaScript and CSS. What we want to do with this is only take up the meaningful information that we need. So let's look at what we need now. What we want to do first off is actually find the rating of the restaurant. So how many stars it has. Let's just inspect the this rating thing. I'm pretty sure it's going to be an SVG because that's what it is most times. Yes, it is. So as you can see right here, it's an SVG um, with a class name UCTUVDH0. So let's grab the class name and we know it's an SVG. So what we're going to do is go here. Let's create a new variable rating equals and then we'll do soup2 dot um rating equals soup 2.find we know it's an svg and we know what the class name is because we just copied it so let's paste in the class name like that and now let's print our rating now as you can see it's only grabbed the svg but obviously we don't need all of this we only really need 4.5 we don't even need 4.5 or 5 bubbles. We just need 4.5 because that's the only data we really need. So first off, to only get the text from this area label attribute, let's do square brackets area label, just like how we did um, href with the anchor tag. And as you can see, we're left with only the text now. And since we have only the text, we can easily manipulate this text by splitting on space. So we'll be splitting where there is a space. So over here. And then what we'll do is we'll keep the first element, which means we're only keeping 4.5. And then we'll do a strip as well to get rid of any leading or trading spaces. Now, as you can see, we've got a 4.5, but it's in the wrong format. It's as a string because you've got the quotes. Let's change that into a float to make it the correct format. We can do that by casting this string as a float. And now it's properly formatted and it's looking good. So we've got the rating sorted. Now, the next thing we need to get is the rank. So let's have a look. The rank over here. So let's inspect this element as well. And if we see here, it's in a span, but the span doesn't have any ID or class. So we're going to go to its uh, parent. So if we go up, um, up a few, up a few, what we will notice is there is a span with the class DSYBJCMFRA, which is this one right here. Now, what I noticed before making this tutorial is that there's quite a few spans with this class. So instead of finding the first occurrence of this class, we're going to have to find a specific occurrence of that class. So I'm going to create a new variable called rank and then do soup2.find 
span because that was a span and then the class is going to be equal to what we just copied of course and then I change this to find all because we want to find all the occurrences of this class uh, of this span like I said there's multiple spans with this class so if I print this you'll be able to see there's like one two three different ones so let's see which one is the one we need zero now that one is it just says off how many restaurants we don't need that one um that one is the looks like the address two that one mm, doesn't seem to have what we need either let's check zero again actually i think it should be zero it says dash of 15,549 restaurants. Just do text. Ah, there we go. So it was part of the first uh, of the first element of the spans with this ID. So as you can see, we've got the rank of the restaurant stored in the rank variable. So that's successful. Now the next thing we need is the pricing, so the dollar signs and the um, the bit of text that shows up here, which is usually the, the, the cuisine and stuff. So let me inspect this. And as we can see here, we've got the a span that's containing all of it. And the span has the class DSYBJDXFE. Now let's just copy that class and when I was obviously researching before creating this tutorial there was only one occurrence of this class which had what we need so we don't have to do find all this time we can just do find. I will call this variable pricing underscore cuisine because we're going to have both of those um, data points in the same variable and we're going to do dot find Again, span with the class being that. Now let's print it out. And as you can see, we have what we need. We just need to do, I believe, dot text. Yep, so let's do dot text. And we get the um, how expensive the restaurant is and then the cuisine as well so steak seafood in this case so steakhouse seafood sorry so except steakhouse seafood so that's correct um, the only thing that happens is these the spaces sort of go missing but I'll leave that to you guys as a little challenge to try and figure out a way to add in the spaces and if you guys want to take it further you can also try and find a way to store the um, how expensive the pricing of the restaurant is in a different variable so for now we leave this as it is now the next thing we want to get is the address so create a new variable and what we noticed last time is when we did the find all one of the elements uh, contained the address so we're just going to copy this line from rank up here and instead of doing zero, I believe it was the first element of the list. So if I print out address here, beautiful. So we have the address of the restaurant. So it should be 30 John Islip Street. Yes, correct. Now we've got the address. The only other bit left to scrape is the contact. So I believe that too was part of the same um, element as the rank but just a different um, different position in the array so let's try two if I print contact oh yep beautiful we have the contact number in as well now those are all the details that we're going to be scraping now what we want to do next is we want to actually save all of this data into the data array um, so we'll do data.append 
and then we shall create a dictionary. Now do name. We just have to create key value pairs. So name and then the name of the restaurant. The URL is going to be equal to the URL of the restaurant. Rating will be equal to the rating. Pricing and cuisine will be equal to the pricing cuisine variable. Address will be equal to address. And lastly, the contact variable will be set to the contact. Okay, beautiful. So now that that's all saving and appending to the data variable, what I'm going to do is cut this code from here and put it inside the loop. The reason why I was running it outside the loop is because we had already scraped the soup for um, the first restaurant in the list. So I didn't want to rerun it every time and make it scrape over and over again because that would take forever. Now that we're done with this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a break statement in, which will only, uh, which will basically mean that it, this loop will not go through all of the restaurants. It will stop the loop as soon as it's done with the first iteration. So we'll only have data for the first restaurant in this scenario. Let's give that a go and see what we get. Great, now that the um, cell has finished executing, let's check out our data variable and hopefully it should be populated with data. As we can see, it's looking amazing. Let's look at the restaurant that we have scraped, STK Steakhouse Westminster, correct. The URL will obviously be correct, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get the rating and stuff. The rating is 4.5 stars, which is absolutely correct. The pricing and cuisine is four dollar signs and steakhouse seafood, which is correct as well. Address seems correct, and so does the contact number. Amazing. So if you guys want to scrape obviously all of the restaurants instead of the first one, which makes more sense, you guys can just get rid of the break statement, and that will go ahead and run all the um, go ahead and scrape the data for all the restaurants for you, all this without getting blocked, because obviously you're smart and you're using proxies to keep yourself safe. So the last thing to do is convert this into a data frame using pandas data frame method. Um, pass it the data variable. Let's just view df and it will show you a nicely formatted table. Obviously, there's only one row now, which is why it looks a bit weird. But um, if you guys wanted to export it to a CSV file, you could do so by typing dot two CSV and then calling it um, popular London restaurants.csv, for example. And then you could use it for all sorts of analysis or any other purpose um, that's useful to you. I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, sorry for not uploading for so long, but I will be uploading in the next month and the month to follow as well. So please stay tuned for those tutorials, and I shall see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.